I'm gonna explain what we're doing here. The much maligned dork disc. Every bike comes with one. Even high-end bikes that come with SRAM Eagle come with a dork disc. And most of those dork discs end up falling off, rattling loose, being taken off by the owner. What happened there? It, it broke off during the ride. Just the name that we've given the dork disc in normal bike vernacular is a pretty good indicator of how we all feel about it. But the dork disc is actually designed for a very specific function and today we're gonna test to see if it does its job and we're gonna test to see what happens in the same scenario when you don't have a dork disc. Welcome back to Burn Peak, I'm Seth and today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different, but kind of the same. So first of all, yes, I have a department store Huffy right here. It's brand new. I bought it for this test because we might damage part of the drivetrain and like, here, this is a $750 derailleur. This is a $130 bike. I don't want to use one of my bikes for this test. Now, I won't let the bike go to waste. We'll make sure to melt it down so it can be turned into aluminum cans and wheelchairs and lawn darts. But today, it might incur some damage. So what is the dork disc? Well, the dork disc is this little plastic ring that goes behind the cassette and is present on pretty much any brand new bike. Its main purpose is for safety. Let me go through a scenario for you. Okay, so I just set the limits improperly. Now what the limit screws do is they adjust how far your derailleur can shift in either direction so that you don't shift off the cassette. In this case, we can shift off the cassette. I'm gonna show you. Okay, so you can see here, we can shift gears on the cassette, move the chain to other cogs, but if we go too far, the chain goes into the spokes. It goes behind the cassette, between the dork disc and the biggest cog. So if the dork disc weren't there, because the side of the chain is bumpy, it's gonna get caught in the spokes, and as your forward momentum brings you across the trail, it's gonna actually wrap the chain up in the wheel and damage your spokes, and worse yet, maybe harm you. So first of all, something I see all the time in the comments, somebody will say, well, if you adjust your limits properly, you'll never need a dork disc, and they're kind of right, that works until it doesn't. We all know that sometimes your derailleur hanger gets bent, you get in some kind of a crash, or maybe a piece of trail debris like a stick gets sucked up into the drivetrain, and that's usually what causes this type of failure, and anybody who's mountain biked enough, it's gonna get you eventually. And so I guess what we're trying to figure out today is, would a dork disc actually stop that? And so I brought my treadmill up from my basement, we could have brought the bike down to the basement, but we did things the hard way. We are gonna get this bike going really fast and we are going to simulate a situation where the chain shifts off into the wheel. So let's get started. Let's get her up to speed. What's going on back there? I don't like how it's rubbing on the front there. Ooh, Amy's not gonna be happy about that. Okay, this is the test with the dork disc, and I'm gonna show you what happens if you shift into that gear. Bike's going down the trail, both wheels are on the ground, you got forward momentum. Let's let her rip. All right, so you're rolling down the trail. Shift. No problem. So what exactly happened here? Well, the chain shifted off. It went behind the dork disc. It did get wrapped up a little bit, but basically slid by the chain and the bike kept rolling. It didn't lock up the rear wheel. It didn't rip the rear derailleur off. So I think it kind of did its job. Now, if you look here, the chain is stuck in here. And so we have to get it out. So if you were out on the trail, you kind of just pull it out. Pretty easy, we're done. Uh, even on this bike, nothing was damaged. The derailleur was far from pulled off. So, what happens if you don't have a dork disc? We're gonna find out. All right. 
let's, uh, let's get pedaling and shifting. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you stop. Well, that was disappointing. I was hoping for a lot more carnage, but that wasn't that bad. Now, it was way worse than with the dork disc in there, that's for sure, but let me show you what could happen. Yeah, I need to show you guys on a real bike where there's like tighter tolerances. That didn't work out like I was hoping. So, all right, we're gonna try it with a real bike. This, this bums me out a little bit, but I have a responsibility here for science. Oh, that's not good. I suppose I should have adjusted the limits or de-adjusted the limits before I did this. God, this is a bummer. This is a huge bummer, okay. All right, let's do it. I think I'm gonna have to get on the bike. No, this is impossible. Why does it slow down so slowly? You can see the derailleur is stuck behind the cassette over here, which is really not good. You're just spinning into it and cutting into it like a hacksaw. I definitely did some damage to my treadmill. Hopefully I can clean it up before Amy gets back. Let's put it up on the stand. Ooh, that's not good. It's... Bike shifts like a dream. I learned nothing. I just did that with no consequences whatsoever. All I have to do is readjust my limits and we're good. So let's discuss what happened. What really happened today is surprising to me. I thought we were gonna have the derailleur getting sucked up into the spokes and all these things that have happened to me before on the trail, but it turns out it's kind of hard to recreate that purposely. No, this is impossible. Whoa, shit. It's mainly just a matter of bad luck. In fact, the worst I've ever had this happen kind of got on video. Oh, that was bad. That sounds bad. What happened? Maybe there was some merits to going a little slower. <laughs> <laughs> and that bike had a dork disc on it. So I think it's a lot of factors that cause a chain to get wrapped up in the wheel and the derailleur gets sucked up into it. And it seems like the dork disc is not the only factor. I will continue to take the dork disc off of my bikes. I think on a higher end bike where there's less space between the cassette and the spokes, I think the dork disc does even less on those bikes. On the Walmart bike, the dork disc did seem to improve the situation, but it really wasn't that terrible without it as well. So these are required by law in certain places, enough so that they just sell all the bikes with them. It's just a little piece of plastic, probably equivalent to the cost of packaging. But the case that a lot of mountain bikers make is that they create garbage, they rattle around, they look bad. Other people make the case that it's foolish to take such a lightweight little thing off your bike that could prevent an accident in some situations. What do you guys think? Today's experiment didn't go exactly as I planned, but I think it should open this up for a little bit of discussion. And while you're at it, recount your stories of derailers getting sucked up into the wheel and tangle all up in the chain. I will think through my experiments a little bit better in the future, but until then, thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time. Freaking flawless. Oh yeah. Good thing about high-end parts is they don't break as easily. Well, maybe not flawless.